now, 19 minutes to eight. Mothering Sunday today, a uh, chance for many of us to say thank you to our mums for all that they do. But for some of those who've perhaps lost a mum or lost a child or struggled to have children, it can be a really difficult day. So let's speak now to Claire Richman, who's from the child bereavement charity Grief Encounter. It helps children who've lost a parent. Um, Claire, morning to you. Um, Good morning. This is a difficult day for a lot of people, isn't it? And it's something that we probably tend not to talk about, something that we'd bottle up. But if you've lost a parent at a very young age, it's something you just learn to deal with. That's right. Um, I, my mum died when I was five. Um, she had breast cancer and um, had it for a couple of years and then, and then passed away. And I've always dreaded this day. Um, I, the week before running up to it, I, I, I can't bear it. Um, and I'm not the only one. It's one in 29 uh, children will suffer the death of a parent before the age of 16. Um, and what Martin uh, so brilliantly did was highlight the fact that this isn't just a small section of society, this is actually a big number of people that are dealing with this every day. Um, it's one in sort of 22 minutes um, a parent dies, um, leaving a, a dependent child behind. Yeah, you touched on, on, this, uh, on it there, that you lost your mum when you were five. Um, I wonder how that changes you. What effect does that have on you growing up? Um, well, to, again, to echo what Martin said, I, I remember the moment my dad told me. Um, we, we knew that she had been unwell. We didn't know how severe it was. Um, he actually sent us uh, away for a weekend with some family friends. Um, um, and we came back and she'd actually passed away while we were away. They didn't realise that she would die quite so quickly. And so in that moment, my, my childhood ended. Um, I remember crying quite a lot when people couldn't see um, and just trying to be brave when people could. Um, it, it sort of, it scars you internally for the rest of your life. And it also puts up barriers, I would imagine, in terms of how you deal with other relationships, but also that sense that maybe you never got to know your parents. Well, I certainly didn't get to know my mum. Um, I'm trying to find out more as I get older. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying really hard to do that. Uh, it's quite difficult because it was 30 years ago now that she died nearly. Um, and with the best will in the world, people, people forget. Um, and it's the sort of little um, irrelevances that make you really know someone. And those, unfortunately, are probably the things that people forget quickest. Um, it does affect you in your everyday sort of relationships. You, unfortunately, if you lose a parent so, so young, you do live up with a fear, uh, grow up, sorry, with a fear that um, people are going to die. Um, you, it's something you can't shake off as much as you might like to, and it doesn't leave you when you're an adult. Why are we so bad at talking about grief in this country? Is this a very British problem and what can we be doing? How can we talk about it more? Because I imagine by talking about it more, it's going to help, is it? Yes, I think as a society in general, we're, we're not that good at talking about it. Um, Dr Shelley Gilbert, MBE, uh, spoke the other day uh, to, to Tony uh, Livesey on, on BBC Radio 5 Live um, and said that we'd had the longest uh, period of peacetime that, that we'd known in, the, in, in British history. And so therefore we have forgotten uh, the language surrounding death. Um, and I think that's really interesting. Um, I, I think we do find it difficult as a society to talk about death. but. Um, what Martin's interview has, has shown, and I don't think that he could have realised um, quite how, uh, how much his interview would, would affect the nation, is that people have wanted to talk about it. People have, have sort of been granted access now to, um, to talk about their emotions and their bereavements. Um, we have been inundated at Grief Encounter with emails, um, Facebook direct messages, um, phone calls, many, many different forms of communication. And what I would like to do is say thank you firstly to anyone that's been brave enough to contact us, whether it's been for support um, or to share their story and just show others that it's okay to talk. Um, there's been quite a few people um, that have wanted to help us and support us. And I just want to say thank you firstly for, for those people for doing that because um, that must have taken a lot of courage and we will get through all of them uh, in the next mm. sort of week or so. Um, and and uh, another thing to, to say is that we don't actually receive any government funding. Um, we are a completely free service to, to people, to, to children and therefore their families. Yeah. Um, but we rely solely on donations and without this sort of awareness our job is to get those sort of donations is a lot harder. Claire, it's really important work and thank you for explaining what you do and for all you do, but also for sharing your story with us this morning. We're really thank grateful. You. Thank you. It's 14 minutes to eight. It's time to talk to Louise. Find out.